I ran slightly over there. Um, apologies for that, but it's, it's such a, a huge topic, and I hope I've done sort of each step uh, justice. Um, and I'll pass you back over to Rodney there, who has some questions that I think some people have sent in. Yep, thank you to everybody who has submitted a question so far. We'll try and get through as many of them as we can. Um, Deck, on a couple of questions have been coming in around social media and B2B. Um, you know, uh, do you, how important do you see that? And is there any specific advice you would give uh, after trying to tackle or uh, attract uh, the B2B market from social media? Yeah, um, social media is doesn't define itself as a B2B or a B2C um, type market. It defines itself as a, a P2P, so a peer-to-peer -peer market. So if you are a business-to-business -business, business that mostly sells to, to businesses, um, it's think about the individuals within that business that you're actually targeting. So who's the decision maker? So that decision maker is probably on LinkedIn, and LinkedIn is probably maybe more seen as a business-to-business -business platform. So you could use LinkedIn to target that decision maker, but that decision maker is also on those other platforms um, like Facebook, like LinkedIn, or Twitter, uh, or Instagram. And you know you can target them on those platforms um, via content that's going to be important to them from a business perspective, you know, I get ads and, and content all the time on my Facebook news feed about, you know, social media tools that I should be using to help manage campaigns and so on. So, you know, maybe don't think of it as a B2B or B2C. Think of it as a an individual to individual level and, and target individuals within the companies that you're targeting across whichever platform they're on. That's great. Um, there, there's a couple of questions also came in in terms of the frequency of posts and some of the the attendees today are worried about creating more noise. Um, uh, and you did put up a couple of a, a couple of figures there on the frequency of each of the channels. So, um, is there any advice you could give around that? Yeah. So uh, I'll probably explain that a little bit more detail because maybe some people were thinking, you know. You know, twice a day on Facebook is a lot. I'm going to really add to the noise, or I'm going to really um, torture the people that follow my page with with content. And there's a couple of reasons why that is the recommended amount. It's because all these social media platforms have algorithms now, because there's just literally millions of content, and that the millions of content can't simply all appear in your newsfeed or the thousands or hundreds of content from people and pages that you follow. So they have devised an algorithm to show you the content that you're most engaged with or that's most valuable to you. So all of those algorithms are have a an element of affinity to them or an element of um, relatability to them. So if and that's guided by how often you interact with that page, so how often you like it, or you view it, or you click on it, and so on. So if you think about, I'm a business, and I post on a Monday, one post, and it gets a reasonable amount of engagement, but I don't post again to next Monday, that people the following Monday may not see it, because they haven't engaged with you all week, and Twitter or Facebook know this, so Twitter or Facebook might, might say, well, that person hasn't engaged with that page for a week. Let's show them content from pages that have they have engaged with during that week. And then if you don't post again until the following week, you know that, that barrier or that distance between your followers and your page starts to create more and more and more. So that's why you need to be in front of your, your customers or your, your followers more often it's to stay engaged so you can almost beat the algorithms or, or, or whatever. But I, I, again, to think, you know, people follow your page because they want to hear from you. You know, they want to hear, you know, providing you're providing you're giving them valuable content, they want to hear what you're doing. They want to hear what your products are about or or what your um, employees are doing or your, your processes of doing things or, or what you're interested in or what, you know, they want to hear from you. So I, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't worry about adding to the noise. Um, I would say, you know, post frequently and post content um, because that's going to get more awareness for you. That's going to get more engagement and that's going to create loyal followers, which turns into sales. And it's the quality of the content you're posting as well 
tech on, isn't it? It's not just about ex just keeping. So we had a question here around frequency of posts again. Should it be a repeated post? But what's your view on that? Yeah. Um, so obviously, yes, you're absolutely right, Rodney. It needs to be quality, um, and that's about you know the quality is usually gated by being relevant and of interest to your followers. Um, and in, in terms of repeating that content, what, what I would say would be if, if you post something on Twitter and it gets lots of engagement, you know that's a, a good post. So what you could possibly do is repeat it uh, further down the line or repackage it to translate it onto Facebook um, or LinkedIn. So say for example, you created a, a 20 second explainer video and got really great engagement. You could repurpose that into a, a blog post for LinkedIn on the LinkedIn publishing platform. You could repurpose that into an infographic for Pinterest or, or Facebook. So because you know the value of that is, is good and the quality is good. So yes, re repeat your posts, but think about maybe repurposing it into a different um, medium, um, whether it's imagery or, or videos. That's great. Um, another question here around the channels. So if someone was starting to, to down this journey, should they prioritize a channel or should they have a go on all of them at the one time? Um, this comes down to resources. So if, if you have the resources, and what I mean by resources is people and time to publish content and monitor content and um, create content for four platforms. So yes, by all means do it. But if you don't have those resources and you're going to stretch them thin and end up not doing the four platforms effectively or again creating that quality content across all four platforms, concentrate on one. And that you know that one what you you'll get from your social media audit, from your research and your your target audience because you know 25 to 45 year olds are mostly on Facebook, so let's choose Facebook. Or the content that we have matches the types of content that does well on, on Facebook. So we'll choose Facebook and we'll run with, with one platform. And to start off, there's a couple of questions around, again, this, uh, this area that you brought up about the amount of effort it takes to create and generate these posts. And um, you, you know, what's your views on the balance between paid posts where you're, you, you've got an ad running on the channels versus the organic posts that you're scheduling in yourself? Yeah, good question, good question. Um, and there, there there certainly has been a shift in in social media to become more of a, a pay to play platform because of these algorithms and because of the sheer amount of, of content on, on social media. Um, and, and the thing is, if you're producing content on a daily basis, which is quality, which is important and valuable and relevant to your audience. You know, you, you shouldn't have to advertise as much. However, doing that on a daily basis is extremely difficult. Um, and what you can then do is then advertise. And what I would recommend spending money on social media um, because it cuts out the sort of the the guesswork and the and the time it takes and you know posting at the right time so that the right people see your your content whereas advertising is a shortcut because you can target 25 to 45 year olds living in Bangor or Belfast who are interested in sports or or finance or or whatever it is um directly on social media advertising because all those those metrics are there on the platform so yeah I, I would recommend doing both and obviously again it depends on budget so you can't just advertise all the time unless you have an unlimited budget but there certainly would I would run at least one campaign every month um, on on social media advertising and it's cost of it's, it's relatively Sorry. cost effective now Declan isn't it compared to like traditional marketing like taking an ad out in a paper or even yeah even yeah, absolutely. You know, not not to run the newspaper or magazine advertising down. You know, a quarter page ad, even in a local newspaper, could cost you three or four hundred pounds. Um, and to track the, the results from that 
can be quite difficult because you don't know who's seen it. Whereas you spend £400 on social media, you can target exactly who your customers are and what your customers' characteristics and, and traits are. And you could potentially reach thousands and thousands and thousands of, of the right people. Um, so in terms of being cost effective, absolutely, yeah, it is. And I have another question here just around scheduling posts because obviously there's tools out there for some of the social media channels that you can actually, for want of a better term, preload your posts in there um, uh, so that so that the posts go out timely when you're busy running your business. Does that have a, diff a detrimental effect on how those posts would get shown up to your followers? No. Um, no, uh, as far as I know, it, it doesn't. Now, um, if you've scheduled the post to go out at a certain time, um, hopefully that time is is the right time to post. Um, one thing I would say is that if you're scheduling it to go out at nine o'clock at night because you're not working, or you know if you're scheduling it to go out at, at two o'clock in the day because you're busy having meetings or whatever, and people start to engage with that post and they're asking questions and people are commenting underneath it, and you've you know, you don't have time or, you know, you've scheduled it because you, you're not on social media at that time. You know, you can miss opportunities there because the more engagement on a post um, tells social media platforms that this is a good post, let's show it to more people. So from a, a detrimental effect in terms of how it's posted, no, but it, there would be a detrimental effect if you weren't there to engage with it um, and answer people's questions and respond to comments and, and breed more engagement from that post. Yes, the, there's certainly a detrimental effect that way. Um, well, just one last question, Declan. We're squeezing it here. We're just going off over the hour, but I think this is an important one around the, the type of post that you're, push, you're pushing out. So I suppose it's about having finding which one resonates best with your customers, but would you have any recommendations around using uh, imagery or video to get higher engagement with your followers versus just a, a, a text-based post? So, so social media channels usually have uh, an order of rank in terms of the best types of content. Best types of content are um, native videos. And native videos are basically a video uploaded directly to the social media channel. So from your mobile straight onto Facebook, that's a native video. And Facebook, for example, and the other platforms see that as the best form of content because they have data to suggest that videos are the most engaged type of content. Um, and next in line to videos is images. Um, next in line to that is um, just general updates, so text updates. Then next in line to that is links to your website, and then next in line to that is like offers and, uh, and things like that. So that's generally the the trend in, in as to how social media channels rank content. So um, if you can create videos all the time, brilliant, um, because the visual content, images and videos, gets the most engagement. Because you know, let's let, let's let's face it. I think most people, you know are time precious nowadays and if if you can watch a 20 or 25 or 30 second video explaining how something works you're going to do that as opposed to reading a six minute or a seven minute blog as to the benefits of, of using a product and that's just the nature of how people are are act are interacting and, and acting on and behaving online and in terms of keeping people to watch your video just to capture just to cover off one last point deck and how important do you feel having uh, the, the subtitles of the closed captions on those videos? Um, nowadays, it's extremely important. 80% um, probably, I think it's maybe 80, 90% of people watch videos on social media with no sound. So if you have a key message um, in those videos, generally people are scrolling down their news feeds with the volume turned off and they're watching videos with no sound. Um, you're possibly missing a trick or, or missing the chance to communicate that message to them via those subtitles and you know people think that's you know how am I going to do that it's actually fairly straightforward because um, one thing you can do is is upload a video to YouTube for example um, and it'll automatically transcribe the, the the words that are in that video albeit you may need to do a little bit of editing um, because the accents and things, they, they do get it wrong on occasion. 
But if you upload that video to YouTube, it'll give you a, a script of, of what exactly was said, and then you can go in and edit it, and then upload it to to Facebook along with your with your video to create those subtitles. There are other, again, like everything on social media, premium uh, products um, that that you can do that with, uh, and all of them are escaping me at the minute. But um, there there are premium products that you can do that that'll do that for you.